Hey guys, Zalonius here. Welcome to another video on the channel. In this video, we are looking at defending. In this video, you can expect me to talk about the types of players you want to use for defending, the important stats, but then more importantly, we're going to have lots of gameplay clips showing you different techniques you can use to defend on FIFA from the second man press to jockeying to when I use certain tackles. And I'll be telling you what works on FIFA 23 and just giving you some general defending tips that really help you get better at the game and concede a lot less stupid goals. My philosophy when it comes to defending is always one based on I don't want to concede unless there really wasn't much more I could have done. And the two reasons for this would be that you've just got very unlucky, which can happen on the game, or your opponent did something special. Those though happening don't happen that often. Most goals, when I coach people or play against people, even when I can see them, when I look back at them, I can analyse it and look back and see. There's probably a few mistakes in there that if they're not done, they're defending a bit better, they wouldn't have conceded. So I'm going to be giving you advice in this video, showing you gameplay clips of bad defending, show you what people shouldn't be doing, giving you general tips and advice that is going to make you a much better player. With the first weekend league of the year about to arrive, I think this is perfect time for this video. I appreciate the support a lot on the channel recently, boys. We are going to be doing a giveaway, a PS5 giveaway, if we hit 50,000 subscribers by Christmas. Subscribe, like, comment, get involved. I appreciate the support. Okay, here we go. So you can see my team here. This is my pay-to-win account, but the same rules apply across any account. For fullbacks, when you're looking for defenders, you want decent pace. I don't think pace is essential this year. You can get away on low to mid-80s pace. Reese James is one of the best fullbacks on the game this year. Strength is important. If you have weak players, they will get bullied on this game. This is more new gen that I'm talking about, by the way. Old gen pace is a bit more relevant, but it's still not as OP as normal. The rules still fairly apply across both consoles. But for fullback, I want a good physicality, decent pace. Defensive awareness is easily the most important defending stat, followed by interceptions and standing tackle. And then for fullback, you do want them to be good on the ball as well, because they're going to be going forward a little bit more, helping out with your attack. Um, but your fullbacks, they don't need quite as good defending. I think defending awareness definitely is more relevant at centre back. For centre backs, and this is this applies across the pitch to be honest, but generally speaking, this year bigger body types really do make a difference. I am pretty much always on this game looking for six foot two and above. Kunde Cordoba, some of the best centre backs in the game last year. They're still decent, but they're not quite up there with the best centre backs this year, in my opinion. I did a meta defenders tier list. Check that out after this video. It will tell you about all the best defenders on this game that you should be using. I rank them. Van Dijk, spoiler, is in the S tier, but you probably could have already guessed that. I'll be doing tier lists for every position over the next few weeks, and we'll update that once a month. So again, subscribe. Keep on top of that. I'll always keep you up to date on what the best players in the game are. But yeah, this Akanji, really good. And he ticks a lot of the boxes. He's got decent enough pace. Again, at centre-back, you can get away with 70 pace this year. Will I prefer more pace of course i just don't think it makes as big a difference i want high defensive awareness really good on akanji here good strength very important on this game jumping and high is useful i don't think crossing and headings op but it is pretty good so taller center backs are good for that solid aggression but i definitely think strength is more important this year generally speaking and then um, interceptions, defender where the standard tackle you can see he's got all of that. Van Dyke just ticks every box here. A bonus as well is if they have good agility and balance, they will turn and deal with through balls better. But you can see here, I'm always going to be using fairly tall centre backs because the bigger body types in game just seem more dominant. They're generally going to be stronger as well, but combined with strength, big body types on this game are really hard to get past. Um, yeah, that's the type of players I generally want in defence. Like I said, check out the tier list where you can see them all. I like at least one midfielder who's going to be really defensive. Vieira is obviously super expensive and out of most people's price range, but he's just perfect. Great defending, great physical, decent on the ball. You want a decent on the ball player midfield still, but it's not quite as important. Big body type. Um, Zakaria, um, he's a really good one. Tanali's very good. Um who are some others? I'm going to be doing a midfield tier list. I'm losing my train of thought. But Goretzka, some of the big body type uh, CDMs that are going to be really good defending. And then the last thing really in terms of setting up your team and the players using is the tactic. That is a key part of defending. Yes, there's lots of gameplay tips you can do to improve. But your actual tactic is going to make a big difference. For me, press after possession loss is key this year. I wouldn't necessarily have it on my all out trying to see out a game tactic. But press after possession loss, I literally use that from minute one 
The stamina's not punished that much on this shit. Even if you have players with low stamina, you get five subs, so you can sub pillars out. I really like having press after possession loss on. Even with not really high depth, it works really well. You will get some free goals, and in this video, I will show you some press after possession loss, just why it's a key part of that, the tactic this year. Unfortunately, I wish defending was completely manual, and there wasn't silly tactics that were OP and made people better defending. But whilst it's there, and it's making a big difference, I'm going to tell you guys about it. I don't want to encourage broken OP stuff, but I, I, I feel like I've been doing you guys disservice. I don't tell you what works really well. I wouldn't say it's to the point that it's it's, it's just crazy. Like it, it needs nerfing instantly, but I do think EA will do a slight nerf to this, which I think would be right. Um, but yeah, you really want this on your tactic. It will make you a much better defender instantly. Simply put, you do not get punished really for the press after possession loss. Um, like you said, you'll see in some of the clips how crazy it is. Let's get into some gameplay and talk about some of the actual techniques that will make a big difference and improve you as a defender on FIFA 23. Okay, here we are looking at the press after possession loss. And in this clip as well, you will see me utilizing the second man press. The second man press, simply put, you do by pressing R1 in game. Very easy to use, and I'll explain it when we see the player. So here, you can see now, I'm attacking and I lose the ball soon. Poor pass by me. I lose the ball. Now watch. Vieira instantly goes there. And my players start to run forward. The press after possession loss is basically based off of Pep Guardiola's 7 second rule. That is that a team is most vulnerable for 7 seconds after they lose the ball. So basically your team turn on team press. Go all out press. Constant pressure for 7 seconds. Soon as you lose it. On previous FIFAs. Whilst it was pretty good, it was quite high risk. It would leave lots of gaps. On this game, it really doesn't get punished much, so there's no reason not to use it, in my opinion. And you'll see what the free goal I end up getting from this. So you can see there, I'm holding Vieira. I'm cutting that passing lead. But you can see now, above Garincha, the triangle, the, there's like a green energy bar almost. That means he's being second man pressed. Make sure in the controller settings, I've done a video on that as well, you can check that out, just type the load control settings in. Make sure you have the next player indicator on. That basically allows you to know who you are going to switch to. To switch to the nearest player, or the player with the indicator above him, you press L1. That can be really useful around the box when you very quickly need to switch to someone and make a tackle. Generally speaking, I will be right stick switching for the most part. Right stick switching, unfortunately, it's very hard to practice outside of real games, but it is vital to becoming a better player. Right stick switching will allow you to cover a lot more and become a much better player defensively. But here the second man press. You can see there, there's a bit of red at the top of the bar. Effectively, watch as this clip goes on, that green bar will go lower. If a player has low defensive awareness, they can't press for as long. The higher the defensive awareness, the longer they can use the second man press. You have to hold down R1 for a player to keep pressing. And when you let go of it, if there's a player closer now, the next player indicator will switch to him. You press R1 again, and it will then make him press. The second man press is really good, and it's a key way to defend on FIFA. It allows you to manually cut a passing lane and then get your AI to press. I often use it personally to get the AI to press. I cover a passing lane so they've got no options. And then I press L1 to switch to the man who's second man pressing, step in and tackle them. Just be careful. If you second man press and pull too many players out of position, you can leave bad gaps and make it easy for your opposition. It does take a lot of practice to get used to, but trust me, over time it will make you a better player. Now let's watch this clip now. You can see here Garinch is going to go to the ball. He wins the ball back. That wasn't me. That was the AI that I was getting to second man press. I end up losing it again here. Do that to make the clip look better. Poor pass by me. I lose it. I look straight away, I get the ball back, my team are pressing, I lose it again. Look here now, Zidane instantly started moving towards him, my team start pressing, I win the ball back again. It's just so oppressive, not a lot my opponent can do, and then nice way by me to finish off the play. We'll watch that clip one more time. The press after possession loss, every time I play against it, I hate it. If you hate playing against something, it normally means it's OP. You can just see here, I'm just winning the ball back for free so often. It's so strong, so hard to play against. You really need to be utilizing it in your game. If you're not, you are holding yourself back whilst it's so strong on FIFA 23. Three goals. It's particularly good in the um, the opposition's half. Around your box, it's probably not going to be quite as good. But defending isn't just in your own box. It's the whole area of the pitch. If you can win the ball back straight away, 
around their box. One, it's going to be a more dangerous position to win it. But two, you're not going to have to defend in your own half. Use press after possession loss right now as of, we, of mid, early October on FIFA 23. It is really good. And until it's not good, I will keep recommending it in my tactics for you guys. Okay, in this clip here, I'm going to show you an in-game example of me defending against someone and talk you through my thought process and show you some of the mechanics that I actually use here. So, you can see here, Zidane has the second man press over his head. That means that green thing going, you can see it's that I let go of it then because I've already got Zidane back into place. Generally speaking, when I'm defending, I want my team set up in good foot positions. I don't want to leave gaps. 4 2 3 one's very good for this because of the two CDMs and I get the Lamb and Ram come back on defense. I am manually now going to the wing just to get Cancelo close to him. But watch what I do. You can see there I'm kind of sprint jockeying to get there a bit quicker. But sprint jock. When you jockey, by the way, it increases the chance of you making the tackle, an interception, blocks, because it slows you down and sets your body. Sprint jockeying is kind of in the middle, but when you're sprinting, you're a lot less likely to make a tackle. You can't turn as quick. You won't block as much. You won't intercept as well. So bear in mind, you don't really want to sprint unless it's the only option you've got. You can see here, my opponent's about to turn. So there, he's not really in a dangerous position, but there's a big gap here in my defense. So let me go back ever so slightly. We'll see here. You can see now, I right stick switch. I want to get that on that exact bit. You can see there, I right stick switch. And you can see it's aiming down and left. I switch to Zidane because I have a big gap in my defense there. It's not crazy, but at this point, I don't want him to go there and pass down there. My CDMs don't always go into the right position. On all gen, this is a lot worse. You really need to drag your CDMs back a lot more. But getting your men behind the ball and making yourself hard to break down is a key point to defending on FIFA. It has been for years. And it's simple. The more bodies you have behind the ball, the harder it is going to be to break down. I don't encourage drop back this year. I think it invites long shots too much, which are pretty good on this game. Uh, you can see in my finishing tutorial how good they are. But it's key here that you get your men behind the ball. You can see there, I'm second man pressing. I'm covering the gap. There's no one there, so I don't have to worry. My Cancelo there is doing a pretty good job. You can see the stamina bar is going. I'm holding L2 to jockey with Zidane, which means he turns a bit slower. But it makes allows me to turn quicker. It allow, when I say turn slow, it means... He's not moving quite as fast, but it allows me to turn quicker to adjust to something. And it means if the ball goes towards me, I'm more likely to make a blocker interception. I'm holding R1. There, I shepherd him out of danger. For me, especially when I'm winning, if I'm defending and I force my opponent to go backwards, that is a win for me. Anywhere away from my box, I am happy with that. If I'm losing and I've got an opponent that's just time wasted and keeping the ball, then I might have to up the press, be a bit more aggressive. You do have to adapt how you defend based on your opponent and the scoreline. So you can see here, he goes backwards. I switch to um, Mbappe. I'm second man pressing again there. You can see Garinch is going in. I'm trying to apply the pressure on him. I'm second man pressing now. I've let go of R1 and pressed it again because I want to switch to second man pressing. Zidane starts pressing there. So it, put, it means he can't just run through there. I close this down. I don't want to give any easy long shots up. My opponent goes there. So now I'm going to try to cover that. Because I can see a gap opening up here. Again, I'm second man pressing. But that because it was red and there was no green left. It meant when the green runs out, that player can't second man press anymore. I missed that pass just. I maybe shouldn't have been holding R2. But I was trying to get there a bit quicker. Now... Mbappe's got past my midfield. I'm in a bit of danger. So watch what I do. I switch quickly uh, with the right stick to this guy. Oh, did I press L1 actually? Yeah, I quickly switch with the right stick to that guy. And then now I'm going to step in very carefully. I'm holding L2. I'm not sprinting anymore. You can see there's no sprint being put down. When they're in the box, I don't want to be moving really quick. I want to hold Jockey, stand my ground, be hard to beat. He tries to turn with Mbappe. I'm holding Jockey though. And then there, you can see I've covered the shot. I don't have to cover there because my Van Dyke's covering there. I'm holding L2 and I block the shot. This game, you do get rewarded a lot more for actually stepping in and pressing the tackle. But if you look here, the way it was going, I wasn't wanting to step in and make the tackle. I just wanted to hold L2 and block. I'm in the perfect position for that. 
I block the shot. And from there, the last thing I want to say is be careful how you build up from the back. A lot of people are going to be using press after possession loss. When they're doing that, be very careful when you win the ball back that you don't give it away cheaply. I did a gameplay analysis for someone today in a coaching session. If you're interested in coaching, by the way, message me on Twitter if you want to find out more about prices, how it works. Um, they gave the ball away cheaply straight away after they lost it. Look for the men in space. That was a bit of a stupid pass, to be honest. I didn't need to do that. Look for the men in space. Going out wide normally works quite well. Look for the men in space. You don't want to give away anything easy. Go out wide, beat the press, and then counter-attack. I'm going to show you a clip here of some actual bad defending from me, but then how I recovered and something that works pretty well on this game. So here, there, there's a big gap between my centre-backs. I should have been switching and covering that through ball a lot quicker, but I don't. And then my opponent's going to get through. But on new gen especially, centre-backs can always pretty much catch someone. I know there he's not going to be able to get it to that guy. A lot of people don't like to slide at all or some people slide too much. I don't slide often, but when I do, I know it's pretty effective. Slide tackling is actually pretty good on this game. My number one tip, generally speaking, when it comes to defending though, is don't dive in. Don't dive in and give easy goals away. Only be aggressive and dive in if you are certain you are going to get the ball. The number one way that I find I score easy goals against people is they dive in and leave huge gaps. Watch here. I slide there, square burn, and it's a very easy way to get the ball back. If I had not slid, he might get the shot off there and get an easy goal. If I know there, that like there, he's not going to do a trick. He's always going to get a shot. He even greened it as well. The slide saves the day. Slide sparingly, but use it as something really good to get the ball. You can also do the hard tackle. That is R1 or circle to do a normal standing tackle. Well, not normal, a hard standing tackle. It's more instant. Or R1 and square to do a hard sliding tackle. I don't think, honestly, for the most part, there's that much use in them. I don't really use them. But if you need to instantly react to something and do it, you can do that. I don't have any clips because I don't really use it. I think you need to anticipate a bit ahead rather than just have to instantly react. If you're already doing that, then you've already made a mistake. But slide tackling is definitely something that's relevant and you need to make sure you know when to use it. Don't dive in too aggressive, but have it in your locker to stop shots like that. Block shots, block crosses, you can even block passes or just dive in on someone and get the ball. Something that works really well in my opinion on this year's game is stepping in and being more aggressive. One of the reasons I really like the big physical center backs is they can do this a lot better. They have big body types, they have more strength. It's very rare that you actually foul someone and it just seems to get the ball a lot better. You have to be a bit more careful against players like Ronaldo and Haaland who are a bit stronger, a bit more physical. They're a bit better at dealing with it. But a lot of people using players like Neymar, Messi and Mbappe, you can do this. Now watch what happens here. So there, I'm dealing with a through ball. I can see here he's turned. He's always going to try to pass it to that guy. I've switched and I'm running down to cover this. There, I step in. A lot of the time as well, it kind of locks the ball onto you. But this year, when you dive in, step in and be aggressive. You tend to win the ball back. It can be very good around here. You'll probably find a lot of good players doing this against you. It's very hard because of how left stick dribbling is. Not as good this year and how the press is. It's very hard to deal with it when someone's playing like this know when you can do this don't dive in and step in and get caught out but once you practice it and get better it will make your defending a lot better here i wanted to show you another clip of me being proactive and aggressively defending the higher the level you go the more careful you have to be with this because better players will start to react to it they might bait you into diving in and then play a through ball over the top but especially against i guess just worse players i find this works really well for me I can see here, he's clearly going to, at this point, going to pass to him. So you can see I've switched to Mendy and I step in. Watch this defending now. I step in there. I'm sick of the software doing this. But I step in and at that point there, I win the ball back and it starts an attack. Being proactive and more manual aggressive defending works a lot better on this FIFA. On previous FIFAs, diving in like that didn't work as well. Like I say, it has to be calculated and anticipated. But doing this will take your defending to another level. You'll get the ball back a lot more. With the ball, you can score. Without the ball, your opponent can't. Without the ball, you can't score. With the ball, your opponent can. It's pretty simple, but it works. Be aggressive at the right times. Mix it up. If you're always doing this, good players will start to pick you off. But if you can catch people out and bait them into bad passes, you'll win the ball back a lot more. I really like that aggressive manual defending is rewarded a lot more on FIFA 23.
One thing that is really annoying to play against, but it is super effective, is when people use the offside trap. The offside trap is something you have to be very careful with. Don't do the offside trap if they're facing your a box and they could easily play one quick through ball and do you. I, I get quite a few easy goals against people who do a bad offside trap. But the offside trap, which you press down, down on the arrows twice, it effectively is really useful for pushing your team up. You can see here, my team was starting to get too deep. If your if someone keeps the ball against you, on FIFA, your team naturally could start to get quite deep. Using the offside trap is very good to push your team up so you don't get caught too deep. And it allows you to be a bit more aggressive and step in and catch people out. Watch here. I use offside trap there. My team start to move forward. If, otherwise, he would have been getting the ball there. And then all it takes is one good touch. My player to get glitched out and he scores. There, I pushed up. I'm being very aggressive, making it so it's hard for him to get there. And he manages to do a bit of a weird turn and pass there. But then I step in, L1, I press the tackle button there. The tackle button is really useful. Like you actually get rewarded a lot more for tackling this year. Pressing tackle is actually rewarded a lot more in this year's FIFA. I actually press the circled standing tackle button a lot more. Whereas on previous FIFAs, my advice would be jockey and don't press tackle at all. This year, you get the ball back a lot more. And if you know you're going to be able to make the tackle, do press it. It's a lot better, in my opinion, this year. Good upgrade from EA. But being aggressive there, using the offside trap to push my team up, makes a big difference. And I think it can really help take your game to the next level if you know how to apply it. It allows you to not get pressured as much. allows you to be a bit more aggressive and catch your opponent out. Defending is honestly something that I could make a three-hour video about. I could spend 30 minutes talking about the second man press and going super in depth about it. I could do 30 minutes on when to dive in, when to not. I'm going to finish off by just giving you some general advice that works more on FIFA 23. There was one thing I didn't include that was in the new game this year that they've added. That is partial team press. That is using R1 twice. I really just don't think it's very good. It doesn't work very well in my opinion. Quite often it bugs out. So I would not recommend that. That is why there's nothing in this video about it. So my advice is don't use it. For the settings, don't use adaptive switching. For right stick switching, I have that on classic. I really just think adaptive switching is laggy and buggy, so don't use that. Like I say, I have got a video on my settings where I go in depth about that, so you can check that out. Crosses, I would do my best to avoid letting people get easy crosses in, but especially if you've got bigger players and their players are pretty small, you don't have to worry too much about them. But crosses can be pretty good this year, so don't let people get easy crosses. If you are just get, letting people get easy crosses in, you're going to be at risk. Long shots, I've shown you how OP they could be this year in my shooting tutorial. Don't let people get free shots on the edge of the box. Close them down. That's one reason you need to be more aggressive if you're pushing your team up to not and not use drop back to not let people get easy long shots. Always make sure through balls in behind are marked. So you've seen on some of the clips that I'm covering through balls with my centre back or full back. When I said it was bad defending, it was because I didn't switch and cover it. Don't let people get easy through balls. Good second man press from my team there. Um, there's lots of things I could go more in depth about, but I didn't want to make the video three hours long. I think it's already quite long. Um, use the type of players that I've recommended. Be aggressive at the right time, but don't dive in for the sake of it. Learn when to press tackle. Learn how to use the second man press. Defending on FIFA 23, in my opinion, is a much more rewarding experience than it has been on previous games. Hopefully this video has helped you. If you still have any questions or there's anything you don't understand in this video, please do let me know in the comments. I'm always trying my best to make sure I um, let you guys know all the latest tips, tricks. I want everything in my videos to be understandable and easy for you guys to apply in your game. Another point as well, before I forget, skill moves. Don't dive in on them. Generally, the best way to defend them is holding L2 and standing back a little bit. Um, like I said, there's just so much I could talk about with defending. Um, I could make a three-hour video on this, but hopefully this has been able to cover all the main fundamentals for you and add a few advanced tips in for the higher-level players who really want to take the game to the next level. I appreciate you guys. Appreciate the support. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it spicy.